that uh, John Major hadn't got the memo from Downing Street. That was just a joke. The fact is, as I understand it, John Major was sent in to the Andrew Marshall this morning by Downing Street to beat up on Boris. Is that a, an example, is that a testament to how rattled they are? Well, my own evidence is that they are very rattled. They got extremely twitchy about something that I tweeted on Friday night where I suggested that a prominent Remainer had thought that Michael Gove's appearance on the Sky debate was very impressive, and I got a call asking me about it. So, you know, these little insights that you get just show the level of nerves there are in Downing Street. And I think the kind of language that's now being exchanged between senior figures in the party raises very serious questions about how the party comes together. We heard Michael Gove earlier this morning saying that he thinks the party can come together on June the 24th. Of course they can come together, but I very much doubt it's going to be on June the 24th. I mean, it's quite remarkable for a Conservative Downing Street to get a former parliament. There are anything between 20 and 50 Tory MPs who are now deeply disillusioned with the Prime Minister. They've got a taste for revolt and doing their own things. The government's majority is derisory. This government could now find it very difficult to get anything major through this potential zombie parliament. I think that's absolutely true, but also on the matter of a coup, I think that there are a number of mischief makers within the Tory ranks who don't mind if a coup succeeds or fails. They feel that the Labour opposition is so weak that they have the luxury of doing one coup, another coup, and is let's maybe have a third Davis? coup. No, I, I, I think the numbers are lower than you think. I mean, you, uh, Sam said 20 to 50. I can win now. Well, Privately, I think they're beginning to think that they have a 50-50 chance, maybe a little bit, even a little bit more than Which that. Which was more than they thought previously. And previously, privately, a lot of them would admit that they felt pretty pessimistic. So I definitely do sense a shift. But if you look at what happened in Scotland, it was around this time that you began to see polls showing an advantage for, um, you know, for, for uh, independence. And there are still three weeks to go, so but, I don't think anybody and, is counting the tickets. And I'm reliably informed another poll coming out shortly showing leave ahead, but we can't talk about that because it's embargoed. I think maybe I just did, but I didn't mention it. I've remained getting... And they're more anxious than they were mm. four weeks ago. Still don't think they're losing. Oh, they're I, they don't think, lose, I, they? And the, what they hung up about is the question of margin of victory. How big a victory do they need mm. in order to put, it, put the question to bed and preserve the prime More than 52-48, I would suggest. I would suggest so, yeah. At least 55-45? I think 55-45. I it. think so in these terms. Yeah. Very well. I think so. Lose or win? Yes or no? Uh, Brexit outcome. Brexit win. Oh, you do? Mm. OK. Very Small well. margin, but Brexit. There we go. You heard it here first. We'll see if it's true. Just to mention uh, that as well as the debate,